Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about tool security. So in this video I've got a whole range of different trackers and the purpose of the video is to try and help you track down your tools should they get stolen. So I've got a whole range of different trackers here and I'm going to go over them one by one and go over some of the features. So the first tracker we've got here is the Milwaukee Tick. Um, it's got a whole range of different features on it. Um, it's very easy to attach to a toolbox. Um, you can glue them, screw them in. On this Milwaukee pack out was actually uh, a perfect slot for it to go in. It's um, water resistant, dust resistant. Um, you only have to change out the batteries about once a year. It runs off a CR2032 battery um, and it's tracked using the one key app. There's only one issue with these, they kind of suck. And here's why. So the problem I have with these is the network is very small. And what I mean by that is there's not many people that have downloaded this Milwaukee one key application onto their phone. So therefore you've got a very, very small chance of this coming into range with another phone with that app downloaded. So if someone takes off with your tools and you've got one of these attached to your tools, it's very unlikely that it's gonna notify you of where your tools are at. And for that reason, I don't particularly like this product. I think there are better products out there. Now, two trackers that do solve this problem are the Apple Wear Tag and the Galaxy Smart Tag. And the good thing about these is they both have much bigger networks. So you're far more likely to come into range with another phone, either an iPhone or a Samsung. And that should give you the last known location of where your tools are at, as opposed to the Milwaukee Tick where the networks are so small, you're probably never gonna recover your tools. So another good advantage to having these is, as you can see, they're very small. We put them up side by side to each other. As you can see, the uh, Apple Wear tag has a slightly smaller profile than the Samsung Smart Tag, but there's not a lot in it. I'll leave a video up at the top right of the screen there um, of a video I've done before where it displays a whole bunch of good places you can actually hide these. Um, especially if you've got a Milwaukee pack out box and um, what you can do is you can actually buy stickers so I've got some 3M stickers there that will go with the smart tag and I've got some stickers right here that will go with the air tag and it just makes it really easy to pop them on and stick them in inconspicuous places which will make it hard for a thief to find and the other cool thing about this is the battery life um, you typically get about 12 months out of these. They both take a CR2032 little small disc battery, I believe. And it even gives you a warning when your batteries are getting low to replace them. So it's just super convenient. You don't have to be changing out your batteries all the time. Now there is one downside to both of these, and that is if the thief has an iPhone and you're tracking him with an AirTag, or he has a Samsung phone and you're tracking him with a Galaxy Smart Tag, what will happen after a few hours is it will alert the thief that there's a tracker basically tracking him. And the reason for that is Apple, both Apple and Samsung, prioritise stalking over theft, basically. Um, so there is a, a hack, a workaround on this. You can actually take out the speakers on both of these. So when they click on their application, it won't make an audible tone, so it'll make it a lot harder for them to find either the AirTag or the Smart Tag. So it is worth noting there's a lot of videos already out there showing you how to remove a speaker from an Apple AirTag and a Galaxy Smart Tag. So if you're looking to do that, there's already a lot of good quality content out there. If I were to go through all the steps of doing that, it would end up being a video in itself. And the other disadvantage with both of these is if someone lives out in a remote location, then again, it's going to be unlikely they're going to come into contact with an iPhone or a Samsung and it's not going to give you the location of where they're at. And it's important to note both of these give you the last known location of when it last came into contact with an iPhone or a Samsung. So that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be exactly where your tools are at. It just means that's the last time the AirTag or the SmartTag has come in contact with a phone within range. So let's move on now and see what else there is on the market. Now the next item on the list is this Wins GPS tracker from Amazon. 
And the great thing about these is they give you pretty much pinpoint accuracy as it's using GPS coordinates. Now there are a few disadvantages to these. The first one being it is quite bulky. It's quite a decent sized unit so it's difficult to hide these. Um, but I do have a slight fix for that. The second one is the battery life. Although it's a 10,000 milliamp battery, you still have to recharge these probably every two months. So that's far worse than um, the Apple AirTag and the Galaxy Smart Tag, which can last about 12 months. So one of the ways in which you can hide these and make them more discreet is hide them in a battery. So I've got a lot of Milwaukee tools. So what I've done is gone out and bought a cheap made in China battery, or you could buy a second hand battery off eBay. And I've taken the battery cells out of the battery. And what I've done is taken the components out of the tracker and popped them in that battery shell, like so. And you can grab some 3M stickers to stick it in so it doesn't rattle around or anything like that. And then you just simply pop the top on the battery, pop the screws back in and pop them in your toolbox and no one will be any the wiser. Now I'll just give you a close up shot of what that looks like. So as you can see you've got the tracking device there and I've just left the USB cable in the actual uh, battery shell as well. So all I have to do is just take the USB and charge it whenever it goes flat. And the reason I've done that is because unfortunately this was just slightly too big to fit in. It wouldn't quite fit so I've had to take the components out and put it in the battery like so. Now when you buy a GPS tracker I'd advise you don't get one on a subscription plan. This one is not on a subscription and all you have to do is buy a SIM card. So I've bought a pay as you go gift gaff SIM card. It comes with £5 free credit as well which is a bonus and you pop it in and just follow the instructions basically. It's pretty easy to set up and then that way all you have to do is if your tools get nicked you can just send a text to the device so the device is in the battery and that will then send you a text back with GPS coordinates to exactly where your tools are at. Now I do quite like this Wins GPS tracker now it is worth noting that it is the most expensive option out of the range of trackers that we've discussed today. However, I do think if it helps retrieve your tools, then it's more than worth the investment. Now a lot of people don't know this, but you could actually just use an old phone. So this is my Motorola G8, and these are great for tracking as well. Um, you just need to make sure that you do a few key things. So one of the main things is to make sure that it's obviously charged and turned on. Now the good thing about this phone is it's got quite a large battery for a phone. I think it's like a 5 or 6,000 uh, milliamp battery so it'll last all week. If I put it on um, battery saver mode, I can literally get about a week out of these before I need to recharge the phone. Now with my one I do need to go into my settings and make sure I've got location turned on and also the Find My Device turned on as well. So depending on your phone, you may have to go into the settings and just make sure you've got the appropriate settings set up. And the other thing is it needs to have access to Wi-Fi. And um, what I do is just leave a SIM card in there um, with mobile data. I just find that's the safest bet. And that way, if my tools were to get nicked, I'll hide this in one of my toolboxes and hopefully it doesn't get found and that's a good way of tracking your tools as well. So what I tend to do is get my phone and pop it in the front compartment of my tote pouch like so. Another convenient place I can put this is just down the side compartment here and just make that disappear. And again, that's just another idea you can try and implement to protect your tools as best you can. The advantage to this idea is it's obviously cheap if you've already got an old phone or something, you could just use your phone as a tracker. Alright guys, that's about it for this one. Hopefully that will give you a few ideas on security measures you can take 
to try and protect your tools as best you can and track them down should they get stolen. Um, thanks very much for watching the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.